Have you ever been teabagged online? Oh yeah. How did that feel to be teabagged by another player? <laughs> it's degrading. It sucks playing this and I'm addicted, so I can't quit. There's so much space up here that I used for WoW and video game tactics that I can't actually use anywhere else. I don't think it can be stopped or helped, quite frankly. I'm done with this nonsense, okay? Your piece of interview. But after that point, I decided I will never play League of Legends with you ever again. My name is Logan, and I'm an addict. I've clocked 20 years playing video games now. Lately, I've been reflecting a lot because I'm just two months away from having a little baby boy, which naturally causes me to think, how can I be a better dad, a better husband, a better provider, a better career man? There's one thing that keeps coming to mind over and over, video games. I've been kind of teetering, play in moderation so I can keep playing, or should I just stop? So I'm going through YouTube the other day and I come across a Joe Rogan video. Oh, huge fan of Joe Rogan. I mean, guy is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, physical specimen, wildly successful, just an absolute man's man. And as I'm watching this clip of him, I kind of had this moment of clarity. Video games are a real problem. They're a real problem. You know why? Because they're fun. Addictive. And you don't, yeah, you do them and they're real exciting, but you don't get anywhere. Right. It's like you could do like, like martial arts, right? You could learn jujitsu. You get obsessed by jujitsu. And then three years later, you're, you're like an elite jujitsu athlete. Or you could just be playing video games. Three years later, you could be that same kid. Joe Rogan caused me to ask myself, do I want my little guy growing up seeing a gamer boy or seeing a man who the only game he plays is the game of life. So in order to answer this question, gamer boy or man, I did some research and then I interviewed four friends in various stages of gaming addiction. Now, quick disclaimer here because I'm gonna be using the word addiction a lot throughout this video. When I say addiction, all I mean is, is it something that causes me to think about it and crave it while I should be focusing on more productive and worthwhile things. So let's get into it. Gaming has also been associated with sleep deprivation, insomnia, circadian rhythm disorders, depression, aggression, anxiety. Then it goes on to list several symptoms of a gaming addiction. I checked off most of these and so at this point, yeah, I think I want to quit video games, but I need some help from someone who's done it. So I traveled to meet up with my longtime friend and mentor, Morgan. Now this guy trained me to be a videographer and he helped me start my own business. He's a pretty smart guy, pretty driven, and I'd heard he'd been off video games for a few months. So, you know, I thought, let's get some insights from this guy. So I'm at Morgan's house right now. He's down in his little basement lair. He's allegedly quit video games. I'm pretty sure he's just gonna be down there playing video games. And if that's the case, this interview is off because he's a charlatan. Nice house. What are you doing, dude? Uh-oh, let's see it, dude. Boom. Go ahead and uh, swipe left and right. Make sure your other... Oh, you son of a gun, dude. <laughs> you son of a gun. My absolute biggest vice is Battlefield. Probably since I was like 16 until really just like a year ago, I was just playing Battlefield all the time. Yeah, it's, it's so stupid because it's the same thing over and over again. But for me, it was, it was really addictive, you know? So then I asked Morgan, how long have you been clean? I mean, are you ever fully clean from something, you know? I mean, we have to hope. <laughs> I haven't played Battlefield in probably six months. This is the first time in my life that I haven't been playing that I also have not really had any desire to play, which is weird, that's a new feeling to me. Right as we finish chatting, I hear his big bro get home from work. So I popped upstairs to interview him as well. Meet Jordan. He's an audio engineer for a podcast agency and freakishly good at making music. Also terrible at Super Smash Brothers. Why did you request such moody lighting for this interview? I wanted to show what kind of man I am. <laughs> to my great surprise, Jordan apparently was clean from video games all of a sudden. Uh, pretty much the whole summer. So like three months? Three or four, yeah. Three or four? Probably since May. Dude, congrats because 
coming over here today, I literally thought you were still addicted to video games. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty proud of you. Thank you. Um, Much like Morgan, Jordan shared a similar addiction. Battlefield, the shooter games. Yeah. <laughs> but it soon became apparent that both brothers enjoy a certain aspect, one that perhaps society sweeps under the rug. Teabagging. And we would just like teabag them relentlessly every time we'd kill them. Teabagging like, like none other, man. Just so much teabagging. So it's just a giant circle of teabagging. <laughs> Time was of the essence, and I could tell that these guys would talk about teabagging forever if I let them go on. How has life been different for the last three or four months you've been off the game? Dude, honestly, I've been so much happier. Like, I feel so much better lately. Like, I actually feel like I'm living my life. And I feel, I feel like a man. So I'm like, I've been focusing on my hobbies. And I'm so much more productive when I'm not playing them. And also, I've been going on a lot more dates, like this whole summer, and just been dating machine. It was time to face my own addiction. Have you heard of League of Legends? I have, yes. Have you ever played League of Legends? I've played a couple of times. Never got into it though, because I've heard of how addicting it is, and I'm like, okay, I. I dodged that bullet. <laughs> and Jordan has no idea just how right he is. League of Legends was released back in 2009. I had some friends playing it. They said, hey, hop on with us. Took a look at it. This game is the definition of lame. I mean, look at these graphics. How could you see this and want to play it? But in 2011, I finally tried it. Much like methamphetamines, I became instantly addicted. I've spent over 3,000 hours on that game. I've flunked out of multiple semesters of college, wasted thousands of dollars, don't even want to think about the opportunity costs. So why is League of Legends so freaking addictive? Watching one of their cinematic hype videos, unless you're just a total anti-gamer, it looks pretty cool. However, compare this character named Pantheon to actual gameplay. So to understand how a game that looks this lame can be this addicting, I just need to give you a very fast breakdown of how the game works. It's a five versus five competitive game where you pick your champion and with your team, you try to defeat the other five players and ultimately destroy their base. It seems simple enough, but there's just a huge amount of champions you can choose from and they each have their own gameplay styles, each of which can be extremely fun. I mean, look at this Ice Storm from Udyr. How could you not want that? Look at this slingshot ability from Zach. I mean, pff, come on, you probably wanna play now, am I right? So aside from this, you have the competitive aspect. When you win, it feels great. You get rewards, you get currency in game so you can buy more champions, and you can rank up in the League of Legends ranked system. Now these same things that make the game so addictive also make the game extremely toxic. If you want to lose faith in humanity, just play one game of ranked League of Legends and you will experience a new level of depravity, the likes of which you've never seen before. One aspect of the toxicity of course is you can go into all chat where you can communicate with your team and their team and you can trash talk their team. But the real toxicity comes from the dynamic between you and your teammates. Because the game is so competitive and everyone's trying to rank up, if even just one player on your team has a bad game, makes a mistake, or just gets pissed off and decides to ruin the fun for everyone, if there's one player not doing well, you cannot win. And so if you do have a game where someone decides, hey, I'm going to intentionally feed the enemy team gold by killing myself, you've just wasted anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes of your life that you'll never get back. So with a game like that, you end the game, you're pissed, but you're addicted. So you queue up again for another game with an even worse mindset going into it. Now you're probably gonna be the guy that gives up and ruins it for everyone else on your team. And you see how the cycle continues. This is why everyone hates the League of Legends community. Everyone talks about how toxic it is. And I have to admit, I have personally contributed to the toxicity in the League of Legends community. I have three accounts. One is active, one is banned for two weeks, and one is permanently banned. I will never have access to it again because apparently I trash talked too much for too long. So to say that I am above the toxic nature of League of Legends would be an absolute lie. I mean, imagine you're getting verbally abused by your team, you're verbally abusing them back, and you're getting verbally abused by the enemy team. Then you lose the game, you're pissed off, and then your significant other expects you to be loving and nurturing and caring still. You can see how they don't go hand in hand which is why I need to quit. Two of my very close friends have played for nearly as long as I have. I sat down with them to get some insights into both League of Legends, me as a player, and then what they would think about me quitting League of Legends. Meet Blake, known in the League community as the Pasig. 
He's an avid gamer, a father, a lover of certain political figures, as well as a longtime League of Legends player. Quick side note, the Psyg and I had just gotten into a huge fight over a game of League of Legends, actually. This is the first time we'd be seeing each other or talking. Uh, we texted to set up this interview, but other than that, we haven't spoken. I've been playing League of Legends since 2012, so over t 10 years, approximately. Do you regret all the time that you've spent playing League? Most of my time has been pretty positive. Sometimes I get involved with friends that just bring the experience down for me. There's two guys I play with pretty frequently. The two friends, of course, he's referring to would be me and Bane. Bane, he's not toxic because I just know he's a ridiculous human being. He's always gonna be ridiculous and that's just who he is. But my other friend, you, Logan, I just never seen a man devolve so fast. Tons of things, your constant greed, your constant toxicity. It feels like I'm playing with someone who thinks he's a god in a game where he is literally getting annihilated. I could tell he had unresolved feelings from our little incident together. And so I asked him to share his version of what he thought happened. Now, before we get into this, there will be terms and words only familiar to League of Legends people. Don't focus on that. Just focus on the raw emotion and the drama. It pissed me off and I decided I'd never want to play League of Legends with you and I stand by that statement. We were having a team fight. We were losing the game. I thought we were going to lose and you said I'm coming to teleport and I was like, our team is pretty far behind. He's just going to go in there and die. So I laughed uh, and you heard that obviously. You got upset by that. Uh, it's something like, <laughs> like that, like was, let's say, okay. So I decided, well, he's going to die. I might as well go in and charge with him so he's not alone. Maybe the rest of the team will follow. I died and I got a triple kill. Oh, through other people's efforts as well. I got a triple kill. We ended up taking Dragon, by the way. Yes, because someone led the team. You died immediately. Because I was having to charge in for you. And obviously I'm gonna die first because I wasn't a tank and they're gonna target me. You just had bad position. And the way I see it was. As the arguing begin to intensify, I could tell this is becoming unproductive. And so I gave the proverbial talking stick back to Blake to let him finish his side of the story. You said you were gonna steal my camps because I laughed at you. I said, do not do that. I'm going to quit and I will never play League of Legends with you uh, if you do that. So I gave you the warning. So I said, it's been fun, man. And I stole every single one of his jungle camps. I quit right then and there. But after that point, I decided I will never play League of Legends with you ever again. Now sensing further resentment, I asked Blake to say what was truly in his heart. I wanted him to describe me as a League of Legends player from his perspective. Not Logan, but rather Raw Ape. Selfish, greedy, unreasonable, narcissistic, egomaniac, indifferent, toxic, rude, sexist and racist. Sexist and racist? Yes. I didn't see those last two coming. I definitely could have seen the first eight. Seeing Blake again after our falling out and being able to grow together through conflict, I felt like it healed a bit of my soul and it gave me an even stronger desire to quit gaming, despite the fact that he doesn't believe that I can do it. You have sworn you would never play League with me again. That's correct. What if I told you that I would be quitting League so it won't matter anyways? I would not believe you. There's a lot of things I believe that you will do but with League of Legends, no way, absolutely not. Now, before I could say I was truly finished with League of Legends, I needed to visit one last person. This is my longtime friend, Bane, otherwise known in the League community as Free Andrew Tate. He's an MMA fighter, a jiu-jitsu expert, and a full-blown League of Legends addict. The only time he could meet was during his lunch break, and so I found myself talking to him with the soothing ambiance of League of Legends in the background. And GG, f you motherfucker, top gap. Tell us about your, your lead username, free Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate, top G, it's a shame what the liberals did to him, the soy boys did to him, I'm sick of it. And quite frankly, I don't approve. I asked him how life would be different if he quit League of Legends. I'd hate my life because it'd be miserable because I would have no way to get away from my wife when she's annoying me. Your wife annoys you sometimes? Every day. But you love her? Yes. She serves the purpose that I need her to serve. Is this the game itself fun? No, it's miserable. So why do you continue to play? 
for the love of the game, dude. Are you addicted? Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous term to use. Why is that? Because uh, I don't do drugs. I don't drink alcohol. With his answers being all over the place, I needed to get to the core of the issue. Curse you. Describe me as a League of Legends player. Uh, terrible, um, for the most part. And you're kind of selfish, but you just, you haven't evolved in 11 years of playing the game. And that's just reality, dude. Sensing his candid mood, I asked him to share his thoughts on our good friend, the Pasig. I think he's a coward soy boy. I think he's hard, he's the, probably the worst player that we've ever encountered in real life on the actual game. Um, I think he's too bad to actually uh, deserve to be upset at you. Of course, I was tempted to press for more, but there was something even more important that needed to be discussed. How do you think life would be different for you if you quit League right now? I don't even want to consider it. That's how, that's how ridiculous that question is to me. Let's say you didn't have video games. What would you find yourself doing with your time? Per, well, I consider myself to be a man of uh, God, so I'd probably, I'd probably join the military and go to war. I need to conquer something, right? And if I'm not going to conquer the Rift, I might as well go conquer a nation. You, would you support me if I told you I was quitting League? I don't think you can quit League. I don't think it's hard to quit the game. I think it's hard to stay away. Aren't those one and the same? No. It's easy to stop doing something for a short period of time, but you're going to play League of Legends. It's our favorite thing to do. We don't do anything else. We don't go to concerts. We don't uh, really do any stuff that normal adults do other than watch UFC and play League of Legends, and we're going to keep doing that. How long do you think until I'm back on the Rift? Six months. I hope you're wrong. You have an addict's mentality. Can you stop on that? You get addicted to things for short periods of time, you leave them, you come back. But guess what? The only consistency in your life has been League of Legends. It's That's the true. only thing that you come back to at the end of the day. And I don't think you can stop, dude. I don't think it can be stopped or helped, quite frankly. Listen, I'm done with this f***ing nonsense, okay? <laughs> You're a piece of an interview in your shitty camera, dude. I'll, I'll see you on the rift, dude. My days of playing alongside the Pasig and free Andrew Tate are coming to an end. I've posted my league accounts on an auction website to be sold immediately. I have some very real feelings of fear and scarcity surrounding the fact that I'm going to be quitting gaming. I don't know what I'm going to do for fun. Will my life still be exciting? Will I still find good ways to relax? Will my friendships with these people suffer? I don't know. But I take comfort in the fact that I know people personally who have said, life is better without gaming. And I'm just a quick search away from a giant community of people that also have quit. When I picture my dream life with my beautiful wife and my soon-to-be baby boy, I do not picture League of Legends in that life. And with that thought in mind, I have the courage to do what needs to be done to become one step closer to being a true man. Goodbye, Udir. Goodbye, Pasig. And free Andrew Tate. Goodbye, League of Legends. It's been a fun 11 years.